Hi, I'm B-Boy Bill, and this is the One Saw Lay-In's Frame. Hey guys, I'm super excited because I know a lot of you have been asking how to build a frame. You don't have all the same equipment I do, and I figured out how to do it with just one saw. So today, I'm going to take you through that process and show you how I built this frame with one saw. I know some of you guys out there have made some comments on uh, the safety of some of the techniques I'm using, and uh, I hear you. I'm not the safest person in the world, and I'm sure my friends and family would agree with that. So because of that, I'm going to put this disclaimer up, and uh, pretty much don't do anything you see here if it's not safe. All right, now that everybody knows you shouldn't do this at home, let's get to work. First thing we need to do is get our jig secured to the table. I'm right here, I'm lining it up with the edge of the workbench and I'm going to use an inch and a quarter screws to secure it to the table. What I'm working with here is a little guide I made just to get the drill holes in the right place of our stock. And our piece of two by four has been ripped down to the overall dimensions of the end bars, which is 15 and 9 16 inches. Basically the whole idea of this little guide is just to make sure that the screws are hitting in the plywood at the same place every time so the holes don't get stripped out and I can use this jig for a long time. I used a 9 64 inch drill bit to make the holes and I'm putting 2 inch drywall screws right through the 2x4 and into the jig. It's super important to make sure that your 2x4 is right up against the rip fence of the jig so that the cuts will turn out perfectly. And with that in mind, it's time for the star of our show, the circular saw. So you can see I have my saw unplugged there. so I'm being as safe as I possibly can. And I'm gonna adjust the blade so it's just hitting below that two by four and barely nicking the plywood below that. You don't wanna put that into the plywood too far. And here we go making our first cut. This is for the bottom bar. As you can see, I'm keeping the saw right up against the rip fence and all along the length of the two by four. I thought it'd be a good idea to label these so that I don't get mixed up, especially if you're running these in batches so that you know which is the top and which is the bottom. It's a good idea to keep your surface area clean when you're working with this jig, and here comes the magic. So just by moving this rip fence over, I have a preset, and I can put these right back in the holes, and we're going to go ahead and cut for the end bars. I will tell you that after you've run this a few times, these holes do get a little bit smoother to go. This is actually the third jig I was building as a prototype to get this project done. And I can definitely tell you that as things progressed, the holes got a lot smoother and everything worked a lot better. It's definitely not necessary to label the end bars. It's pretty clear that they're going to be end bars. They come out both the same. There's no rounded edges like that first cut on the 2x4. So probably not necessary to label those. But just because I was in the labeling mood, I'm going to have them label them all. I'm going to slide that rip fence over to the next hole to cut the next end bar. And here we go. These end bars are about 3 8 inches thick. And the top and bottom bars are three quarter inches thick. We're just going to line the rip fence up for the final cut here. This will be for our top bar. Get it lined right up and We'll go ahead and give that a cut. All 
And while I'm cleaning up my mess here, I'll have you take a look at the final products from the first cut. You see the top two are the sides, then the top, and then the bottom bars. Next thing, we're going to go ahead and remove the remaining 2x4 from the jig. We won't need this piece anymore. It'll go in the scrap pile for future builds. Now I've got a couple marks on the jig here for the exact length of the top bar and the bottom bar. Right now, everything's cut to the length of the end bar. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to mark the ends of the top and bottom bar so that I know where to cut them. The top bar is uh, 14 and 5 16 inches long, and the bottom bar is going to be 12 inches, 12 and 3 16 inches long. The next step is to cut the top and bottom bar. And I'm lining them up here with the cut line and I'm using these clamps. I love these clamps. If you don't have a set of these, um, check it out. I'll put a link down in the description under the tools and you can just go and see the clamps on the, uh, the B-Boy Build page. I have all my Amazon links there of all the products that I think, think uh, people will be interested in. But these clamps are a definite must for this jig. I can't say enough about them. They save so much time and they are super strong. Now that we have our top and bottom bar ripped to the length, we can go ahead and get our jig set up for the end bars. This little jig here just kind of offsets the rip fence a little bit so we can cut those narrower parts of the end bars. I'm securing it in place with a couple two inch screws. Next is a clamp to hold our work down and I just secure this in place with another two inch drywall screw using the drill at first but in between each piece I usually use the regular Phillips head screwdriver. The clamp allows you to slide the end bar in from the end and then tighten it down. One important thing when tightening it down is to make sure that the material is up against the rip fence as tight as possible and then just using a regular Phillips head tighten that right down. I have a hole right in the middle of the frame that I use as a guide to drill the hole for the dowel in each end bar. It works great. Once the hole is drilled the only thing left is to go ahead and cut the wood. I cut one side of the end bar stopping at the edge of the jig this worked perfect for my saw, but depending on your saw, you may have to adjust where you end your cut. I then flip the end bar over, secure, and make the cut down the other side. The process is exactly the same for both end bars. So once you get both of them done, you can move on to the next step, and that is removing the rest of the material. Because this is a one saw frame, I chose to use a chisel to remove the rest of the material instead of another saw. But if you have a coping saw laying around, that works just as well, if not better. You want to flip it over and remove the material on the other side as well. And then I like to clean mine up just a little bit. Once you're done removing the material on both the end bars, you should have two perfect end bars ready to go for your B-frame.
We're going to go ahead and remove the end bar unit and get this jig ready to finish up the top bar. Go ahead and mark the top bar an inch and a sixteenth from either end. This is the material that's going to be removed. And I just put a line across here so it's easier to line up in the jig when we get to that point. Next thing we're going to do is slide that top bar up from the bottom of the jig, making sure the line is flush with the wood. If it's not completely flush at first, you can go ahead and give a couple taps with a hammer and get that line lined up perfectly. Here's a close-up view of how the wood is clamped and how the line just barely is flush with the plywood. This allows the material to be removed just at the line level. Go ahead and flip the material over and we'll repeat the process on the other side. Once that's done, we can get our clamp set up to clamp down our top bar and our bottom bar to finish these up. Here we are clamping in our bottom bar and we're just going to cut it in half and actually make two bottom bars out of this one piece. We're going to remove our bottom bar from this jig and we're going to get set up to do the top bar. Now the top bar needs a groove down the middle for a starter strip. So the first thing we need to do is get the saw blade depth set. And I'm doing that here. I drew a little line on the side and I'm lining the blade up with that line so that I can have consistent cuts through all my top bars. Here's a picture of what the saw looks like as I'm setting the depth. You can see the black line there. That's how, how low I want the blade. And once I get that blade to where I want it, I lock it down. And it should be the perfect depth to do the, both the starter, starter strip groove and also remove the remaining pieces of the top bar. Once your blade height's all set, I go ahead and clamp in the top bar and get ready to cut the groove for the starter strip. After removing the clamp, you can see the starter strip groove is perfectly cut into the top bar. I'm going to slide the top bar back into the jig and I'm going to remove that little bit of material that's left on the end of the top bar.
After that material is removed, I'm just going to flip it over and do the other side, and we'll be all done with the top bar. And there it is, all the pieces done with one saw and a jig. The only thing left to do is put your dowel in there and a starter strip. If you don't have a way to cut starter strips, you can order some popsicle sticks and use those, or you can actually use the wax starter strips and wire the frames up by drilling some holes in the sides. Well, now that you've seen the one saw frame jig in action, I'm sure your next question is, yeah, but how do I build that? I got you covered. The next video I put up, it's going to be how to build this one soft frame jig. So go ahead and click that subscribe button and that other little thing to let yourself know when I put this video up and we'll go through how I built this. Thanks for watching everybody. And if you found this content helpful, please click the like button. It does help a lot. We'll see you next time.